Hello guys, I hope you are doing good. In this video, we'll see what is closure, how to create a closure, and how we can use it to solve different types of problem in JavaScript. Closure is a simple yet powerful concept in which we have nested functions, so function within the functions, and the inner functions can access the properties, variables depend in the outer function. Even if the outer function is out of execution context. So you have invoked the outer function, even after that, the inner function can access the properties of the outer function. So let's see this by example, what do we mean? It can access the properties even after the parent function is out of execution context. Let's create a function outer and inside that I'm defining a variable now I am creating another function over here and let's print the value of the variable that's part of its parent and then at the end I am invoking the inner function. So if I invoke the outer function you will see that the value of the block is getting printed. Now we can have, so the inner function can access the variables or the properties of its great descendant. So let's create another function inside an inner. Let me call that as inner2. And if you see, if I console.log here, log here, and then invoke the inner2. Still, it will print the ABC. So, not bad. You see here, still able to print the ABC. Now, the preference to the variables or the properties are given to its nearest scope. Let's say if I define a variable in its immediate parent, then it will access or it will point to the the immediate parent's variable. So it's printing PQR. Just for the clarification, I'm printing it again. So if you see, it's printing PQR. Similarly, we can have parallel functions as well. So like we have inner over here, let's say we can have another instance of it, call it S. And then inside the inner we have its sibling in a s and let's say it's lmn and now if you see so pqr and lmn both are being printed so uh, in a s has a inner two function and that's printing the block variable which is having a value of lmn similarly inner is having a block variable whose value is pqr and it's getting printed, it's getting printed in inner two now not only the variables, we can access all the properties, even the arguments of the parent function. So let me clear this. Let's remove this and clear this as well. So now if you see, I had a variable defined over here. Let's take, so let's take an argument in the outer function and see if you can in that over here so yes I think we just have to invoke the inner function at the bottom we have clear this now if you see so because nothing is passed it's printing undefined if I pass 10 over here it will print 10 now here i am invoking the inner function inside the outer but we can return the inner function as well so if you see let me define a function now here when i invoke the outer function it has returned a function inner that inner function is stored in the variable my fun now if i invoke my fun so this will print the value 10 okay see over here now using this concept we can solve different types of problem in javascript 
let's say we want to create a function where the outer function takes a number and it returns a inner function the inner function also takes a argument as a number and then we when the inner function is invoked it returns the product of both the numbers the outer functions argument and the inner functions argument so let's say here the value is x and the here is value is y and then we are printing the product of both which is x into y so my outer function is returning 10 and then my inner function it should take a value if i'm not passing anything it's undefined by default so it will be printing 9 if you see you have to invoke this 9 will be printed because the value of uh, there is nothing passed in my function now if i pass 3 over here it will print 30. so using this we can create multiple instances let's say the outer function is returning and here i say multiply by 10. now if you pass anything to multiply by 10 it will multiply it by 10 only so here 30 is printed if i pass sorry Twenty, so it will print twenty into hundred, two hundred. Sorry, twenty into ten, two hundred. So if you see, irrespective of how many time I invoke the multiply by ten, right? It's a fresh invocation. Still, it's able to remember the variable or the argument of the parent function and utilize it. So that's how closure works, and that's what make it very powerful. Let's say we want to track how many times the inner function is invoked. So what we can do is we can create a variable in the parent function and then we can track over here right every time the inner function is invoked we increase the count now if you see if i print the count over here right let's remove the arguments so see if i'm so here because we are invoking it twice one two is printed let's me increase the count over here so here because it's been invoked four times so we are seeing four over here so that's how closure works we can access the variable we can use it as a private variable and then we can use it to track what's happening in the inner functions or for any other activities so this way we are uh, we will be able to solve multiple problems in the javascript there are many problems or almost uh, yeah there are many problems that require closure to solve it so in the coming videos we'll uh, see at least five to six problems related to closure and how we can solve that so i hope you have learned something new today thank you for your time see you in the next video